around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Up there, Mr. Dillon, he has just plain vanished. And there's no note anywhere. Are you sure of that, Chester? Not nothing. I looked again all over. Well, it's two days now. This just isn't like Doc. What'll we do, Mr. Dillon? I don't know. I might start asking people, Chester. Uh, try the saloons and the store, maybe the depot. All right. I'll go right now, but I don't know whether. Well, I do declare if that wouldn't. What's the matter? Look. Riding right up front to you guys take his life. Look. Oh, that old rascal getting us all worried about him. For land sake, you sure are a sight for sore eyes, Doc. Where in the world are you been, anyway? Uh, hello, Chester. Man, you had us worried, Doc. That's so? You've been gone two days, you know. I know. Well, next time, leave word, Doc. I will. I surely will. If I can. Well, it sure would save us a lot of fretting and general upset. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you mean, Doc, if you can? Just that. If they let me, I'll leave word. Come on inside, Doc. Well, you want to tell us about it? I can tell you part of it. The least important part. I made a promise about the rest. You know how it is, Matt. No, but tell us. Well, the other night, let me see, it was Wednesday, a couple of riders tromped right into my office. They said a man was hurt bad. Someone's out past Fort Dodge. So naturally, I went along with them. Well, why didn't you leave a note and say so? They didn't tell me exactly where we were going, Chester. But they sure told me not to leave any note. I told you what? Will, will you let him talk, Chester? Uh, uh, of course, I figured that it must have been a shooting, but my job is to take care of everybody, sinner and saved alike. And so when we finally got to this place the next day... Oh, what place, Doc? Well, that's part of what I promised not to tell, Chester. There was a young man there who had got himself shot in the back. The bullet lodged right in his spine. I dug it out and did all I could for him. And then I just sat there for quite a spell. Then I put my things away and walked out into the other room. Well, Doc, how is he? He's dead. The shock of extracting that bullet was too much for him. Bad place, the spine. You killed him, huh? No. No, I didn't kill him. He's dead, ain't he? Look, mister, that boy wouldn't have lived more than a couple of days anyway with that bullet where it was. Whoever put it there murdered him. You want me to shut him up? Not yet. Doc, tell me something. You know that boy in there? I do. And the three of us here, you know any of us? Him? I've seen him around somewhere. Dodge, I guess. That settles it. He ain't walking out shut of here. Up. You know his name, Doc? No, I don't. Might come to me, though. 
Let me think about it. You don't seem to understand. He wants to kill you already. Now you're trying to remember his name. That's just going to make it worse. They can't kill a doctor for following his oath. I shot that boy when he tried to get away, and I can shoot you just as easy. Don't be a fool. I'm a doctor, and since there's nothing more I can do here, I've got to be available to other patients. I've been away too long as it is. What are we arguing about? The sooner we shoot him, the better. What kind of a man are you, anyway? Don't you know I'm the only doctor within a hundred miles of Dodge? Right now, that's one too many. Now, wait a minute. I'm kind of thinking the doc's right. He ain't like an ordinary man. A doctor, well, it's almost like he ain't quite human somehow. He's human enough to tell what he knows to that hard-head marshal they got in Dodge. And we'll have him on our tail and we'll never get our 20,000. The way I figure, it's us or the doc. I'm not interested in what you figure, mister. And I've lived too long to be afraid of dying. But right this minute, there may be several folk needing me real bad. You know, he's right. We can't kill it. Well, I can, and now, I you'll can. do what I say, you hear? Doc, listen to me. If I let you go, will you promise not to tell about anybody you recognized here? And if I don't? And doctor, no doctor, I'll kill you myself. Well, yes, I suppose you would. All right. I'm here as a doctor, and nothing else. I promise. Word of honor, Doc? My word of honor. Okay. Get out. One other thing, Doc. What? You break your word. You tell anybody where this place is or who you saw here, and we'll get to you. We'll kill you no matter where you try to hide. I gave you my word, didn't I? Yeah, you did. But just don't forget what I said. We'll kill you. We'll die trying. <laughs> That's quite a story, Doc. And you played it right smart, if you ask me. Uh, who was he, Doc? I say, who was he? I only recognized one of them, Chester. Besides the man they'd shot. Yeah, that's what you said, but uh, have you thought of his name Chester, yet? you don't understand. I gave my word I wouldn't tell. Yeah, but, Doc, they're just a bunch of killers. Matt, wouldn't you have done the same if you were in my boots? It'd be a hard choice, Doc, but... Yeah, I suppose I wouldn't. Well, any man would, at least as any man of honor... Yeah, well, I guess I wasn't really thinking about it that way. Uh, I'm going to get some sleep. Matt? Yeah, Doc? That was a good boy they murdered. I hope they hang for it. How are we ever going to find him, Mr. Young? I don't know, Chester. We don't even know who they killed him. Come to Dodge in six months. I'm I know. here now, Marshal. Oh? Uh, is there trouble, Jake? I'd call it that. Well? You know that cottonwood? That big one right down to Brandy Bend? Yeah. There's a hole down by the roots, the north side of it. I put a sack in that hole this morning, Marshal, with $20,000 in it. 20 th That's a lot of money, Jake, even for you. No, it ain't if Hank gets back all right. Hank gets back. And that's ransom money, huh? Your boy's been kidnapped? He didn't show up the other night, Marshal. Next morning, I found a note packed on the corral. Said, leave the money or else they'd kill him. Oh, come on, Jake. We'll try to get there before they pick up the money. No, no, Marshal. I won't take any chance that they'd shoot him sure if we did that. Look, Jake, if they killed Hank, you'd want him hung, wouldn't you? I'll hang him myself if it comes to that. I'll hunt him down like wolves. All right, then let's go. Let's get down to Brandy Bend and wait for No, him. Marshal, I already told Hank's you no. Hank's dead, Jake. You... What? They already shot him. He's dead. What? What are you talking about? Where is he? Well, I, I don't know. But how come you know he's dead? 
Well, I, I can't tell you. Marshal? Oh, Marshal, I had about enough of Look, this. we're wasting time here. Now, come on, Jake. I'll tell you what I can on the way to the river. You better, by heaven, or one of us is never going to get to the river. Jake Worth was known as a hard, hot-tempered man, but he was straight as they come. And all he wanted out of life was his ranch and his three sons to work it with him. It was hard to tell him, but without mentioning Doc, I said what I could. And when we reached the Arkansas, we hit our horses in a clump of bush and worked our way on foot up to the big cottonwood. And then we saw it. They do it. I gave him the money. What? I'm sorry, Jake. The marshal. Marshal, I've been kind of confused by all this. I swallowed your story on the way down here. Now I want the truth. I want every bit of it. I told you, I don't know who they no, are. You know a lot you ain't telling me. What, what's going on with you anyway? I told you all I can. Marshal, this is my boy laying here. Take it easy now, Jake. Will you talk? I don't know anything, Jake. The man who told me about it had to promise not to name anybody. What man? Who is he? I'll get it out of him if I have to cut it out. I know. I know. That's why I can't tell you who he is. I'll give you 24 hours to name those men. After that, me and my sons are coming to Dodge, and there'll be blood spilled. Jake, I give you my word, I don't know who did it. I don't believe you. Come on, I'll help you take your boy home. Get on back to Dodge, I'll manage you. You're making a bad mistake, Jake. You got 24 hours, Marshal. It might not work, Doc, and well, you'll be exposing yourself to a lot of danger. Have you thought about that? Yes, I have. And I've also been thinking about the men who killed young Hank Worth. Well, we could wait till they start spending their money, or till one of them gets drunk and maybe talks too much somewhere. Yes, we, we could, but meantime, you and the Worths will have a gunfight, Matt. All right, then, Doc, let's go. I want to get out to the ranch before dark. Come on. I don't see anybody around. Maybe they hid out. Far enough, Marshal. Just watch him, boys. If he makes a move, you shoot. Jake, I came here to stop a shooting, not to start. You can stop it, Marshal. Just tell me who killed my son. If I know, I'd be on his trail, Jake. What's Doc doing here? You tell him, Doc. Jake, I took the bullet out of Hank. He died soon after. What? That's right. Now come down here where we can talk like friends, and I'll explain it to you. Stay where you are, boy. Doc, let's hear it. Well, they they got me out of bed, Jake, and led me out in the country. Hank had been shot in the back, and I extracted the bullet. But it was no use. He'd have died anyway. There were three men there, and I recognized one. Who was he? I had to promise I wouldn't tell. Or they'd have killed that him. don't matter now. Wait, no. wait a minute. Just think about it, Jake. Doc gave him his word, and you're asking him to break it. Will you think about it for a minute? I'm thinking... I'm thinking about my boy, too. You want to help get the man who did it, Jake? Don't ask fool. Will you listen to me? Those men told Doc if he talked, they'd kill him. And they meant it, too. Now, I've got an idea, Jake, and I want you to hear me out, will you? Now, look. 
We'll spread it around that Doc has identified the killer. Go on. And we'll just wait, see? One or two or maybe all three of them will come into Dodge to kill Doc some night Still, soon. they might get away. I'll deputize you and your boys right now, and you can wait for them with us. But you're going to have to stay hidden like me. And Doc could rather make himself a target for them killers and break his word to him? Yeah, Jake, that's right. Now, look, Doc and I will go back to Dodge now. I'll see that the story gets started and that there, too, you and your boys can ride in. But separately, though. Otherwise, it might cause talk. I understand. And you come straight to the docks. We'll be there. Don't you worry. <laughs> For the next few days, Doc never left his office. The rest of us sat around in his back room and waited. Chester kept us supplied with food and coffee. But we began to get pretty restless cooped up like that. And by the fifth night, we were being real careful with one another and over polite. But on the sixth night, about midnight, we got our game. Mr. John. I think it's Sam. What? They just rode up the street. Three of them. They're tying up outside right now. All right. Doc, come on in here, will you? Yeah, well, what do you want me to do, Matt? You'll take cover in here and stay out of sight. Let's go all downstairs and meet them. Boy. No, no. We'll just scatter them that way. Now, listen. One of them will probably stand guard on the street while the other two come up here to get Doc. Chester, you and the two boys go down the back way, and Jake and I'll wait here. But don't jump that man till we go into action up here. You understand, Chester? I, I got it. All right, then move fast. Come on, Jake. Now what? We just wait here in the dark. Good. Here, I'll fix Doc's blanket on the couch here so that they'll think he's under. They're on the stairs now, Mort. Huh? Okay. Just get back in the corner. Jake or we'll be shooting each other. Be quiet. Don't start shooting till I do. Doc, wake up, you lying dog. Let's just shoot him and get out of here. Wait, he ain't here. What? Yeah, get your hands up here under arrest, both of you. Jake? You all right, Jake? I got one of them. I'm all right. Doc. Doc, come on out. Huh? They're dead. Light the lamp, will you, Doc? Okay. All right, Mr. Dillon. Come on in, Chester. We got the one in the street. He tried to get away when he heard the shooting up here, but he ran smack into one of the worst boys. He's dead. Good. Well, Doc, he can tell us now. Is one of these the man you recognize? This? This one here. Yeah. Well, Jake, I guess that's it. Mm. Oh, Marshal. Uh, what? There... I doubted you, Marshal. I'm sorry for that. Forget it, Jake. No, it's best I remember it. Man shouldn't make mistakes like that. Well, there was no harm done. The way it worked out. Yeah. Uh, I'll buy you a drink before we leave, Marshal. I think I kind of like that, Jake. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for the fourth of the five most popular Gunsmoke shows. It is called Bloody Hands. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is the CBS Radio Network. Now, get more miles per dollar with Texaco Sky Chief Supreme from Texaco's Tower of Power. Texaco, Tower of Power. Texaco, Tower of Power. New gasoline, Sky Chief Supreme. Texaco, Tower of Power. New Sky Chief Supreme gives cars new growth. Sky Chief Supreme from Texas. 